You all right? All right, okay guys. So, brand new pickup video. Got some PlayStation 2, got some original Xbox for you. So before we begin, I just wanted to give a quick thoughts about a game that I played recently, which is Call of Duty World at War Final Fronts. So PlayStation 2 exclusive. Obviously it's on PlayStation 3 and 360 as well, a bigger version of it. But in this generation, you're only got it on PlayStation 2. Uh, they did really well in World War 2 in PlayStation 2. Here you got this one, and you also got Medal of Honor Vanguard. Two really great exclusives. So definitely worth owning those two for your collection. I played through it recently. Um, got to say, like the bigger brother on the PS3, I prefer the German missions to the Japanese missions. They're just a lot more fun. I really enjoy fighting the Germans a lot more. But the Japanese missions are really good on this one. On the PS3 game, when you get the kamikaze dudes running at you, they go bloody wild. And it can be really intense, which, you know, is probably a good thing in terms of the game because, it, you know, it creates that tension. But they're a lot calmer on this one. They're a lot easier to just shoot down. Uh, there's a level I was playing where you're on a minigun and you're just on the, on the gun and you just the smoke bombs go off and the Japs come running at you and you're just blasting the shit out of them. It's, it's great fun. Um, there's no overheating all, which is even better, so you just keep spraying. Um, yeah, great game. Um, I really like the graphics. The graphics are beautiful for the time as well, for the, the system that it's on. I expect gorgeous graphics on the Xbox. I don't expect them to be this good on the PlayStation 2. It, it, it really impressed me a lot. Uh, great level design. Um, controls are absolutely rock solid. They're really easy to get into and just shoot everybody left, right and centre. Yeah, excellent game. Really impressed with it. Definitely recommend it. It's not an expensive game as well. So if you want a, a new experience, if you've never played it, you want a new World War II experience, 100% recommend picking that one up. Uh, the only downside, and it's a very minor thing, so not even really worth mentioning, but when you hit a checkpoint, it accesses the memory card and slows the game down. That's a little bit annoying. It's only a brief second or two, but it is kind of annoying. The Xbox wouldn't have done that because the Xbox is superior. Uh, right, so first pickup, we've got Splashdown 2 Rides Gone Wild. So yes, I've got the original Splashdown over there. I picked it up when I was down in Devon last year at uh, Cash Converters. Uh, I do like these jet ski wave race type games. When it comes to sports titles, I'm really more the arcade action. I don't like the ones that are actually like real sports. I find them really difficult to play and quite boring. I like it when they're just a bit more fun. So this has got really nice fun vibe to it. Beautiful graphics. You know, you pull your tricks off, do your Supermans, all that kind of thing. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was when I first started playing it, the level started off really bright and colourful. And I thought, oh, this is great. It's very Nintendo, very Wave Race. And then all of a sudden it just flipped and it went all dark and dirty and moody. And it was all Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, what the hell's going on? So I don't understand why, if something triggers that when you're playing the game, I don't know what the reason for it is. It's a crap decision, I shouldn't have done it. I should have just kept it fun and light and colourful. But yeah, decent game. Uh, at least put more time into it. I've been playing a lot more of the, the actual, the bigger games like Call of Duty and 24 and 007 Quantum of Size, the more story-driven titles. But yeah, I will be jumping back into a lot more of these arcade you know, one-hit wonders, uh, the, you know, the ones you just jump in, play a bit, come out, play something else. Next game I picked up is one I did a video on recently when I picked it up from CEX. Uh, if you want to see that video, if you want to see the full unboxing and gameplay, uh, that video is on my channel and it is called uh, Did the Gamble Pay Off, I think. So check that one out. Uh, it is Steel Dragon EX. So fantastic vertical shooter. Uh, you get two for the price of one, six quid for the game. I've got Steel Dragon, which is a port of the arcade game. Classic. It's really, really good. I, loads of people in the comments were telling me how much they loved the game and it is really fun to play. And then you get Steel Dragon Evolution, which is the PlayStation 2 upgraded version with the full screen, the nice graphics. Now, when I first played it, I thought that was the one I was going to be playing the most. I really enjoyed Evolution. But the more I've played the two, I've got to agree with everybody else. The original Steel Dragon is the one to play. It's fantastic. It's a beautiful vertical shooter. Shame it's bloody vertical because you only get a little sliver. So unless you turn your TV on the side and go Tata, you ain't getting the full experience. But nonetheless, the graphics are really, really nice. And the soundtrack is awesome. I love the music in this game. I'm crap at vertical shooters. I'm not someone who's very good at them at all. Uh, I struggle to find my way through the patterns of bullets, but I'm, I'm getting better as I play these. You know, this, this is a lot like Strikers 1945 2 on the PS1. It's a lot easier for me to play. It's not over the top bullet hell. I can actually find my way through the patterns. And, you know, most of the enemies are easy to shoot. It's just really the bosses. You just have to be tactical with your bombs. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the ship's too slow, and I don't like the lightning. The lightning weapon's a bit crap. I'd rather use the missiles, the bullets, the bombs, you know, I, I enjoy that a lot more. But nonetheless, I've been playing it quite a lot and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's a great game, this classic arcade shooting where just jump in, you need something to play, bang on Steel Dragon, kill a couple of hours, it's fantastic. Uh, next one is the latest game that's just arrived a few days ago, and that is 
Kill Switch, another exclusive. All of these are exclusive to PlayStation 2, which makes it even better for me, you know, because uh, I really want to build up my exclusives on the PlayStation 2, so it gives me a good reason to own the system. But yeah, Kill Switch, you can get it on Xbox, but you have to import it from the US, and it's expensive. This cost me a fiver. For the Xbox version, it starts around about 30 quid when you start adding in import tax and international shipping. It's a pain in the ass. So if you want a, a sealed copy, it's like 40, 50 quid. I was like, I'm not paying that. As much as I prefer the Xbox version, because obviously it's going to run a bit smoother, it's going to have a higher resolution, it's going to look a lot nicer. But the PlayStation 2, even though it hasn't got a 60 hertz mode, it's only got 50. It's great. It looks really, really nice, really colourful, plays great. I haven't had any slowdown yet, which is fantastic. But yeah, I finished it on the Xbox a few years ago, so I'm just going to play through it again now. I don't remember a lot of it, to be quite honest. I was playing through it, and I was like, I remember the first level, but I don't remember all this other stuff. And so I was on a level the other night in the rain. You're on a boat, and it's absolutely pouring down with rain. And it was it was Metal Gear Solid. I mean, that's what it was. It was Metal Gear Solid 2. I was like, it's just a blatant rip-off. But, it, you know, it, because I hate stealth, it's nice to play this one, because you're just shooting everybody. It's just action. So the idea of the game is to just... It's just a cover shooter, third person... But unlike modern ones, because it's a, such an old game, you have to hold down L1 and you can't let go because you'll come out of cover. It's kind of frustrating. But once you get into it and you work out the controls, and you know you just sort of get into the vibe of it, and it's great fun. And I was just shooting dudes left, right and centre. At the end of the boat, you lay some C4, and then you have a section where there's a timer where the bombs are going to go off. And you've just got to run through the area. There's no not really worrying about cover so much. And I was just blasting dudes. It was great fun. Yeah, really, really enjoy Kill Switch. It's a great game. If you've never played it, highly recommend adding it to your collection. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and if you remember rightly, it was Cliffy B back in the day who was who talked about how this game was the one that influenced the cover system in Gears of War and all. So it's important for that reason alone. Right, okay. On to the Xbox. So I've got a couple of games to show you. Now, the first one I picked up, I think I saw this originally on Sean's video, Pompey Game Boom. I'm not entirely certain if it is, but I think it was his. Uh, it's called Dark Summits, and it's a snowboarding game. Now, the cover, I've seen this loads of times. I always thought it was an RPG. That's the kind of game it looks like to me. But no, it's actually a snowboarding game like an SSX. Uh, it's all right. I've been playing it a bit. I haven't put a lot of time into it, honest. I've been playing other games. But, I mean, graphically, yeah, it's beautiful. It's an Xbox game. Of course, it's gorgeous. You can do tricks. I can't really get to grips with the trick system. It, it's not as simple as like a Tony Hawk where you just tap a button, move the stick, and Bob's your uncle. It seems quite difficult. But, um, yeah, I'm going to put some more time into it. Not overly impressed with it so far. I think graphically it looks gorgeous, but gameplay is lacking a little bit. Maybe when I work out the tricks and I get better at the controls, maybe it'll improve and I'll enjoy it more. So time will tell on that one. But to be quite honest, from initial play, I'd rather play an SSX game. They're a lot more fun, a lot easier to just get into uh, so yes, yeah, so that's Dark Summit. Next one I picked up is one of the best launch titles for Xbox, which was Dead or Alive 3. I've owned this loads of times, but now I'm rebuying the Xbox games back. I need to get into the collection. Uh, this one's great. This was starting bid, five quid, about to end, and I snagged it. No one bid on it. I was well chuffed. Uh, got all the manual, all the paperwork, the, the strat guide, everything. It's absolutely great. So very chuffed. Even the plastic actually looks in pretty good condition. It isn't grimy. Uh, this game's great. I mean, it's one of my favourite games at launch. As I say, one of the best games at launch, I think. Uh, up there with Halo. It was just absolutely gorgeous. It still is. It's still aged really well. 23 years later, and the graphics look fantastic. You know, back then, the Xbox, it was king for me, at least, for the weather effects of the water, the ice, the snow. They look so good. The one level where you're outside, and you kick them off the mountaintop, and you land in the puddle of water, and the way it shimmers and everything. Absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a really great game. And, it does feel a little short when you play it now, I've got to be honest. If you play the story mode, I can get the boss pretty quickly, not the main boss. But I still just love it. I love all the you know, the, the, the back and forth between your character and the person you're fighting. You know, the Bruce Lee dude when he's going, wah, and all that. Great fun. So, yeah, cracking game. Right, okay. Last game for the Xbox is a game that I'm currently playing through and really surprised me how much I've enjoyed this one. Uh, this one I got for a pound on auction from the same guy I got Dead or Alive. And it is Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah, licensed game. I've never played it. I remember playing the demo on the 2005 Xbox 360 kiosk. But I've never played the original Xbox version. I've owned it before, just never got around to it. Um, and I've never played the 360 game, I just played the demo. But I, I got it. I, I burnt it to the hard drive. And I thought, well, I'll just put it on the hard drive and I'll play it when I get time. I've got other things to play first. And then I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to test it. And of course, that means you're there for a few hours then, doesn't it? 
So, so I stuck it on and it just drew me in straight away. It's really, really good. I'm absolutely amazed how good this game is. It's very cinematic. Um, it starts off, I mean, I'm not a fan of the film. I am going to re-watch it. I've got the HD DVD to watch, so I need to do that. But the game itself, it starts off, you've got yourself, Jack. You've got Jack Black's character, another guy, and the woman, um, who's the one who gets kidnapped by King Kong originally. Uh, which was Faye Ray, wasn't it, in the film, from Broadway, in the original film. I don't know about this one. But yeah, it's, it's really good. It's a first-person shooter, and gorgeous graphics for the time for the Xbox. You know, the Xbox was king of first-person shooters, so of course it looks good. And it plays great. I was really surprised, actually, how fast it drew me in. Because at first, you're just walking around a little bit. It takes a minute or two to get going. And then eventually, you get your first weapon. Um, you get all the the creatures to fight as well. Uh, you get all kinds of like little little creatures that don't do any, anything to you. You've got big maggots that eat you. You've got flying pterodactyl dudes. You've got little dinosaurs. You've got a big T-Rex you have to fight with. Well, escape from at the beginning where I am. Um, it's really good. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I looked at the gameplay for the 360 to see what the graphics were like, so I'm going to pick that version up because I want to play that now. And it looked great. And that long play was what, four hours, so I don't think I'm far from the end there because I've played a lot of this already and I've had a great time with it. Uh, there are some little, little puzzle elements to it as well. Where, I mean, it's very minor, where you have to work out how to open a gate, where you have to find the handle to open up a gate. And the last one I was doing was driving me crazy because I'm in a room... I, I could find the handle, it's at the top of a staircase in some brush, but you have to burn the brush to get the handle. And I couldn't find out where the fire was, and I was like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong here. I eventually backtracked, and just a little way back, there's a bit of water. You go through the water, walk through a waterfall, and that's where the fire was. So obviously you can't walk through the waterfall with the fire. You have to put your stick in, get it hot, and then there's a hole on the side of the wall, so you throw it through the hole, walk through the waterfall, grab it, and then carry on. I wasn't sure if it's just going to go out if it hit the floor, but it didn't. So you grab it, take it with you. And as you're going along as well, in these, when they do this to you, there's little braziers that you can set light to, so you don't have to... If you've got to backtrack a long way, it's helpful on the way, because if you lose your weapon, like a dinosaur attacks, you have to burn the little bastard. At least you can grab a stick, set light to it again, and carry on, uh, which is the one bit I was on the, yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. You, you have to open this door, but there's loads of brontosauruses walking around. They're going to stomp you to death. And you have to just trek for ages and go for all this bit. Eventually find the fire. I set light to the stick and then you get attacked by these little mini T-Rex dudes. And so I was just constantly running out of fire. And I had to keep setting lots of braziers as I go. So I didn't have to trek back too far. Uh, but it's, it's really good. Uh, when you meet the T-Rex for the first time, it's great. I didn't really understand what was going on though. The Jack Black and his mate are trying to open the gate. And the, the bloke shouting something to me. And I couldn't hear him because of the dinosaur. And I'm trying to shoot the dinosaur and it's doing nothing. I got munched. And I was like, oh Christ. Turns out what you have, all you have to do is just run around. There's a big rock, and if you run around the rock in a circle, the T-Rex will follow you, keeps them out of the way, and they can open the gate, and then you all run to safety. But it's really cool. I mean, it, yeah, great game. Absolutely blown away. I got my pounds worth out of it. So I definitely recommend it. If it's in your collection and you haven't played it yet, you probably just thought, oh, it's just a crappy license title. It's actually a real, really fun game. Um, only criticisms I've got, I mean, the guns... Unlike most first-person shooters where the gun is just permanently out, this one isn't. It's hidden. You pull the trigger and it pulls it up. And you have to hold the trigger to hold your gun out, which is unusual. Uh, I don't know why they made that choice. And when you shoot as well, there's no reticle to aim. So you're just literally moving the gun around like this and just sort of using your eye to try and line it up. Now, with a dinosaur, if you've got a shotgun or something, dead easy to take him out. But when you're throwing a spear to try and nail a little maggot, it's a pain in the ass. But I did find out that you can just click R3 and you zoom in, so it makes it slightly easier to get the angle right. You know, I had a problem yesterday. I was in a cave and I was, there's some water and there's some maggots on the left-hand side and you have to get a stick, stab a little fish and then throw it to distract and then the maggot comes out and then you have to throw the spear to get it. But trying to get the angle right when you're trying to aim in, it can be a real shit. But I will say, so far so good. I can't, I've got to be about an hour away from the end, I reckon. I've played a lot of it already. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Did not expect this game to be any good at all. And I'm now going to buy the 360 version because that's exclusive as well. You can't get it on PS3. So I'll buy that and I'll play through that one and see if that's any good as well. I mean, it's the same game, so I don't know if they would put any extra stuff in there, anything different. I mean, I saw the bit with the T-Rex on the 360. It looks so much nicer. This version looks really good, though, for what it is. So, yeah, definitely recommend King Kong. Excellent game. So, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Have you played any of these games? What do you think of them? Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time.